So this is the part three of developing Streamlit application. So in part one, we developed the Streamlit application. And in part two, we deployed it to Azure. And in part three, now we are going to deploy it, the same application in AWS. So let's see a quick recap. How does this application looks? And if you want to get to in the detail of developing this application, check the part one. So this is how this application looks. Let's turn it into dark mode. So it will not hurt our eyes. So this is the dark mode. So this is how the application looks. It's a very simple application. As I said, check the detail in part one. Now we will take this application and deploy it to AWS. So for that, we'll go back to our Docker file. This is the same Docker file which we have used in part two to deploy to Azure because here we are building Docker. So there's no change at all. But quickly, uh, let's take a look at the Docker file. As you can see, we are downloading the Python and exposing our port 8501, making the directory, setting up the working directory, and then copying the requirement text. And in this requirement text, we just have one thing, Streamlit, because that's all we need to run this application. So we copy the requirement text. Why we are using this requirement text today is uh, like tomorrow, you may have multiple requirements and you can mention all those requirements here in this file. And then just run the pip install. So whatever requirements you have, it get installed, then copy everything. By everything I we mean is basically we are interested only in main pi, so it will be copied. Do entry point and then do a command and pass the main.py file name to the streamlet so it can run the application. Now, Let's see how we will deploy it into AWS. So for AWS, there are a couple of prerequisites. Number one is to get the AWS CLI installed. So that you can just go and find out, search on Google AWS CLI. And here you get all the information how to uh, install the CLI on your box. This is needed later on from VS Code to deploy your Docker to AWS. So after logging in AWS, you have to create an Elastic Container Registry. So you can come and search like this container. And as you can see, Elastic Container Registry, click here and create an Elastic Container Registry. Uh, let's keep it public for now and give a name to this registry. Let's call it Streamlit. Uh, say let's use Linux ARM64. Everything is optional, leave everything as is, and then create the repository. So once this repository is made, you can see how you can use the repository by clicking on the repository name and then looking at the push command. So here is one, two, three, four commands are there. You can take this and go back to your VS code and run these commands. So first command is about logging in. Now let's see what happens. So here I see login succeeded, but you may not be this lucky. And this is how I want to differentiate my channel with other channels because people always show everything working, but they don't show how they reach to this stage. So this login may not work in your scenario because you have to create a user in AWS and then you may, even after creating the user, you will come across this error, which I'll show you. The error will look something like this. So here's the error. Even if you have a user, you may get this error. This is my username. And it says it's not authorized to perform blah, 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 get authorized token from resources. So for this, you have to come back to your IAM management for the user, wherever you have defined the user. So in AWS, you have to go and define a user and then come and add a policy. And here's the policy I added. It's called, I called it ECR public, but this is basically giving the full access to your container registry. So let's see how you will do that. Choose a service, container, Elastic Container Registry. And you can give all the permission here. For now, click here and choose all resources. 
and then say review policy, and then you can create policy. I'm not going to create the policy because as I showed you, it's already there. Once you will create this policy and come back to login, you will still get an error. And this time the error will be this, which says that you don't have a STS get service bearer token permission. Again, same way, go back to your AWS, again, add inline policy, search for STS and give this permission again. So these are the two permission you have to give. And you have to keep coming here and keep giving the permission if you get an error while logging in. So that's important thing because you may otherwise waste a lot of time figuring out what's going on. So once you have successfully logged in, then go to the next step, which is here. Now you go and build this Docker image. So I already have this command, which I'm using to build the Docker image. Why I'm using my command? Because I put dash app in front of my build command. So run that command as building the Docker. Once the Docker is built, you can go and check back again. The next command is tag the image and then the push. So let's tag it, tag the image. This is how I'm tagging it. So after tagging it, now we can push this image. Okay, now I'm pushing the image. It will take a few minutes and then let's go back to the registry and see here it's empty. There's no image here at the moment. Okay, now it looks like the whole image is pushed. Let's go back to the registry and refresh it. So, so far you have just created a, a container registry and created one of the repository called Streamlit and there you put your latest image. Now this copy URI, you need this copy URI, let's copy it. And now let's go back to create the cluster, ECS cluster. So here, when we'll come here, first of all, let's see how we reach here. Let's search for container. And you, we see this plastic container services. So this was the registry where we put our do Docker image and now we are going to container service. So now we are here in ECS and now we are going to create a new cluster. Okay, let's choose this one, EC2 Linux, and then click on next step. Cluster name, let's call it Streamlit. On demand instance, it says large. Let's change it to small. T2 nano micro, okay, let's choose small for now. Number of instance one, leave everything as is as default. We're not creating any VPC, no change. And let's go ahead and say create creating the cluster. Okay, so it looks like the cluster is created. So now we see a running cluster here, Streamlit, but there's nothing. The cluster is running empty and our Docker is in the registry. Now let's go and create a task definition, create a new task definition. Let's choose this EC2, enter a name, Streamlit. So now we will just leave this task role also empty because as you can read here, optional IAM role that task can use to make API requests to authorize other AWS services. So we are not building a very complicated web app. So I'm gonna leave this task role as is, leave it as is, none. Uh, task memory, let's say 1024 CPU, one, you can choose one. No, you have to choose 128 CPU unit you have to give. And then this is the place where we are going to add the information about the container. So container name, streamlit. And this is the image path which we have copied before and we have to paste it here. Where did we get this? It was here, go to ECR in the registry and copy this URI from the latest. Now coming back, leave everything 
as is, but we will do one port mapping. We will map the port 80 with the port which we need, which is 8501. This 8501 is coming from our this uh, Docker file because we are exposing this port because Stimulate is listening here and port 80 is my HTTP port. And you can map other ports also like 443 for HTTPS. We are not doing that now because you need an extra certificate installation and all that. And for that, from here, you can find out the certificate configuration for HTTPS. So for now, we'll keep it simple. Just map the port 80 to this TCP IP and leave everything as is default and then just add. So we add a container here, everything as default, and then we'll say create. So we have created a task definition. And now we'll go to cluster and click on this cluster and then create a task here. Run new task. This task definition has come out from our previous activity where we went and created a task. Choose this default streamlet, everything default, leave it everything as is, and then let's run the task. Now oh, this task is running. Now let's go to EC2 now. So now we come to EC2. You will come to this EC2 dashboard by just searching EC2. EC2 here, as you can see here, you come to this dashboard and dashboard and you see one instance running here. And here, when you click on instance ID, you will see the public address. So if you click on this open, and this is not working. The reason is here we have used HTTPS. And as you know, we talked about it that you have to configure the certificate and all to have HTTPS working. So if you remove the S and enter, it is working. So our application is deployed in AWS and it's running. And once you have a proper domain, you can configure it to point it to this URL. So this is it. A quick recap, you created a Docker, you created a registry in AWS, you push the your Docker images there. Then you went to ECS. In ECS, you created a cluster. And in cluster, you created a task definition. In the task definition, you gave information about the Docker. And once that task is running, you went to EC2 to take a look at the URL to have your application running. And you got that from clicking on an instance and here was the public IP. So this is it. Hey, one, one last thing. It may happen that you go here and you put HTTP and still your web page may not show up. So for that, what you have to do here, go to security, click to the security group, and then you have to add an inbound rule. And you can say edit inbound rule. As you can see, it's already added when I was setting up the cluster, but uh, sometime it may not happen. So you can come here and you can add a rule, all these different kind of protocols and port you can add here to open, and then you can save rule and then this will work. This, you may not come across this, but if that happens to you, you know what to do.